Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. I want to talk to you today about a theory that is floating around and it's saying that Donald Trump is the Antichrist and he has just confirmed a covenant with many by having Israel and the UAE enter into this agreement and he's also working towards the Greater Israel Project and that includes nations as far as India and this is all a part of the Antichrist goal to make Jerusalem the world capital for the Antichrist being worshipped. I want to address this briefly, very briefly. I came across this video this morning while I was doing my own presentation, getting it prepared. The, the theme was the um, Abraham Accord and I was working towards getting that already and I came across this video because some of you have recommended that I check this person's videos out and I, I, and I know about this guy, I've known him for a while. Um, I'm really concerned what I was listening to today and I want to address something in particular in regards to what he was sharing and it's about the coin, a coin that was minted in Israel and I'm going to show you what I found and I'm going to expose this fallacy that is floating around and it's just gaining so many people, um, people's let's say acceptance it's very widely accepted this theory and it's really sad it's so sad friends in my videos i go over so many untold amount of scriptures in my videos in my content there's so much content there now that there should be no doubt i'm not mixing twisting manipulating the word of god like some of these false sheep are doing out there and i'm going to call them that because that's exactly what they're doing it, the weird thing about it is that in his actual message from today, he said that it's so sad that, you know, there's no true shepherds out there leading the people into truth, leading the sheep of God into truth. And I was like, oh my goodness, you just said Donald Trump is the Antichrist. You just said that Daniel 9 is taking place right now. You just said that Israel is working to the Greater Israel Project, which includes nations as far as India and how do i begin addressing this you guys how do i actually begin doing it what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna start now all right i'm just gonna show you what i have and how i'm gonna address it it's, it's really difficult it's very camera can you start shaking <laughs> sorry you guys oh i'll start again Okay, friends, so <laughs> hopefully my camera's not going to be shaking now. All right, this really is no laughing matter. But before I begin, can I just direct you, point you to my playlist section, friends? In my playlist section on my channel, I have a ton of content now. This playlist that I made is called The Noahide Laws and Antisemitism. I updated it six days ago. Now, in this playlist, I've the actual videos, most of them are over a year old now, as long as I've been on YouTube, which is roughly just over a year ago. I went and researched the Noahide laws, I did my homework regards to it, and I presented my findings in these videos. I was challenged by Israeli News Live. They came on my channel and left a very de derogatory, demeaning comment. They blocked me from commenting on their own channel. Anyhow, all the story, the history is all there. I addressed what happened. You can see here, Noah Hyde Law's Hysteria by Israeli News Live. Noah Hyde Law's Propaganda Anti-Jewish Rhetoric. Doug Hamp, I forget what his channel is called. I, I don't think he's got a channel name. He invited me on his show to talk about this because he recognised that I did do my research, I did do my homework, and I discovered it's nothing but fear-mongering, propaganda, anti-Jewish rhetoric. So I want to just direct you straight away to my playlist before I get people telling me, do I not know? Have I not heard about the Noahide laws and the beheadings and how they want the Jewish Antichrist Messiah to be worshipped in Jerusalem? I've done all the research, you guys. I'm sorry, but that is not biblical. There's no foundation for it in the biblical text. That's it. 
So bear with me because I'm really upset and I want to show you what I came across today that was absolutely, it just flabbergasted me. This is what I was researching and I told you a couple of days ago I'm working towards giving you a presentation in regards to what are we seeing here? What does this represent? What's with the sim symbolism here? Now a friend said to me this is a shrine of sword and I have to say I agree. I will refer you back to one of my videos I did. I've done two videos on that, friends. The Shriners and the connection to Islam within the Freemasonic pyramid, whatever you want to call it. I exposed the Baphomet connection to Mahomet. That's all in that video also. Uh, please watch my content, please. It's there. I've done my research. I've done my homework. Anyhow, I was preparing all these scriptures. I was getting these tabs ready when I came across a video and they were talking to us about this in this person in this particular person's video this coin now in this person's video prophecy based i don't know it's it's a ministry that he has based in israel and i'm not talking about um amir safati i'm not talking about amir I'm talking about another person who is in Israel and he does these videos. He talks about the Noahide laws. He said Donald Trump is the Antichrist, you guys. He said it just now, just recent, his most recent video. He said that Donald Trump is the one who has, um, is fulfilling Daniel chapter 9, making the covenant with many, i.e. Bahrain, Israel, UAE, and that's not it. It's going to go further all the way across to India and this is a part of the Greater Israel Project. Some of you might not have heard of that. What is that? I found a link. Right, it's this. It's very anti-Semitic. And um, many Muslims, majority, also believe in this paradigm. Also, they believe that the evil Jews, the wicked Zionists, with greater Satan being the USA and little Satan being Israel, are collaborating in order to fulfill this vision here purely anti-jewish garbage rhetoric and that is exactly what it is and i don't care what people might think about me saying that because that's what it is so what do i hear on this channel the same stuff so apparently this christian there's so many of these people out there it's, it's shocking to me and this is how the sheep are led astray brainwashed indoctrinated you know why friends sadly they're not picking up the word of god they're not scrutinizing the message they're just sitting there like blind sheep with ears that don't work because they're not listening to what the man is saying i spent a couple of minutes listening to it i couldn't believe my ears i went and researched it lo and behold he's telling you fables but you're not going to be bothered to check it you're not going to scrutinize you're not going to go investigate well i did and this is what i discovered in his video where's that coin gone now the one that i had initially this in his video he's using the, using this imagery by the way i'm on um the israelmint.com website because i wanted to go directly to the source to find out what is this symbolism what is it exactly well we can see the menorah is right there let me see if i can just get the screen to be just placed just there however this gentleman in his video is saying that this um cut out here the cut out not the menorah the cut out is the greater israel map he's saying that they have covertly put that into that sign in that sign there that's what he's saying but do you know what this is really what this is actually about you guys <sighs> let's scroll down well first of all what does it say on the actual coin on the actual coin it says ancient cities in the holy land and it gives you a breakdown of what it is 32 millimeters one ounce in weight is gold and if you want to buy it, it's going to cost you that much all right okay let's go on so many nations mint their coins you guys it's like with the noahide laws drama it's like oh president trump and all these other presidents in the u.s have signed in the noahide laws they snuck it in covertly 
And so when we go to martial law, they're going to default immediately to the Noahide laws. No, no, no. It's not factual. It's not true. They've got nothing to back that up with apart from hearsay, circumstantial evidence, because there is no actual concrete evidence to that theory. This is what it says. Israelmint.com. I'm going to tell you, remind you again, it's called the old Jaffa coin. Old Jaffa. It's not the Greater Israel Project map, covertly hidden in the coin design. No. It says, Israel Coins and Medal Corps proudly introduces a new thrilling series of eight ancient cities in the Holy Land. There's eight of them with different markings. Struck in one troy ounce fine gold and fine silver versions. Let's go. Many empires have desired and ruled over the ancient cities of the Holy Land, each leaving its historical traces. Absolutely. How many ancient empires have come and trashed the place? Loads of them, right? And the Bible tells us about it as well, doesn't it? The Word of God is so good, so faithful, so informative, so historically accurate that we can trust it even today. Each city throws light on different periods of history and cultures. The ancient cities of the Holy Land series unfolds. It's a series, mind you. There's, there's several of them in the series. Unfolds the unique stories of the ancient cities of the Holy Land and preserves their intriguing history for the generations to come. Here we go. The eight ancient cities to be featured in this series are Jaffa, Acre, Tiberia, Caesarea, Nazareth, Safed, Ashkelon, and Jerusalem. The old Jaffa coin that I showed you, which this other gentleman in his video is saying, no, this is a part of their conspiracy, you see. This is the anti, um, Antichrist Zionist Greater Israel Project is hidden in this coin. He made this whole drama regarding this coin and no one's going to look it up are they friends if you if you know what channel i'm talking about go and look under the comment section nobody's got a clue they're clueless instead they're giving praise upon praise to this individual for his research for his wonderful work and i'm like you're misleading the sheep of god and i'm seeing so much of it nowadays it's getting beyond ridiculous and it really annoys me can you imagine how the Lord God feels? If you have any doubt, refer yourself to the Ezekiel Bible chapter, the book of Ezekiel, and look up um, chapter 34. How God is the true shepherd and how he will bring into question all those shepherds who were meant to be looking after his flock. Let's carry on. I told you I'm going to be upset in this one. Old Jaffa, first in the series. Jaffa built on a hill jutting out from the coastline of Israel to the south of Tel Aviv today, developed as one of the most important port cities of the Mediterranean region. Mentioned in the Bible in the book of Jonah, Jaffa was where Jonah the prophet boarded a ship bound westwards in an attempt to flee from his divine mission. He's just going on about how the seven cities in the series, several cities, ancient cities, have been engraved, minted, on their coins, you guys. That's what it's about. It's not about the Greater Israel Project. Where's he getting this stuff from? Why is he propagating this perception? You know why? Because he wants you to believe that the Antichrist is going to be a Jew. So people who hold this view, they have to try and force their narrative into the Word of God to make their paradigm fit the Word of God. Engraved. In precious gold and silver is a view of old Jaffa showing the historical port and buildings as they appear today. The modern buildings of Tel Aviv to the right and old buildings of Jaffa to the left create a perfect blend of old and new, past and future. But no, he wants us to believe there's a conspiracy in this. That's not really what they mean. No, they're hidden in the coin that it's really the Greater Israel Project. Yeah. That's what it's really all about. Oh, my goodness gracious. Face. View of old Jaffa Port, the foreground historical buildings on the hill, left other modern buildings of Tel Aviv, border inscriptions in English and Hebrew. Old Jaffa, but it doesn't show you that in his video, does he? 
common reverse. Border inscriptions in English and Hebrew, ancient cities in the Holy Land. In the center, a seven-branched menorah, candelabrum, taken from an ancient Hasmonean coin of Matthias Antioch Antigonus. Old Jaffa, and it gives you the specifications yet again. <sighs> That's what that is. Now, if we go to Bible map, let's go and have a look. I zoomed in here. Let me take that out if I can. Basically, oh, I just, it's just like, this is so pathetic that I'm having to do this, you know? Right. So you can see the bit there, friends, that is sticking out sticking out right it's coming out like that what's that highlighted on Karen Shemesh okay let's go back to the coin you can see that there you see that this is a tiny tiny little port city they're trying to highlight because it's a part of their series of ancient cities in Israel let me zoom out Old city Jaffa, so they've got this whole bit in there. They try to basically carve out the borders of that city. What else do they have in their collection? Well, I went to the main page to have a look what else they've got. If you're in any doubt, let me show you what page I'm on. The Holy Land Mint, Israel Coins and Medals Corporation. So it's, it's pretty much official, your bog standard mint. Rao. <clears throat> Look at these, they're beautiful coins. This is what countries do, nations do. It's like your collector's items, collectibles and gifts. <laughs> There's one there with the seven mountains of Jerusalem. Now, knowing some of these people, they'll make that to be the seven Antichrist kingdom mountains re mentioned in Revelation 17. This is how absurd it is nowadays. so annoyed at this it's just so frustrating i see over and over and over again i've got tons of coins here you guys they're so beautiful look at that red sea marine life set birds of israel set <clears throat> tradition prestige series banknotes views of jerusalem gates of jerusalem one of a kind desert agriculture in israel there's the old Jaffa one right there. That's the on the flip side, on the other side of it. I went to look at this coin as well to see where's this come from. So this is at the templecoins.com. There's our Antichrist, you guys. Oh, this is so ridiculous. Cyrus Trump half shekel temple coin 55 bucks Trump's recognition of the centrality of Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel has caused many people including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to compare President Trump to Cyrus the Great but why Cyrus the Great yeah why why let's find out why do they think or consider him to be Cyrus Cyrus is known historically as one of the most humanitarian, merciful, pluralistic conquerors of all ages by allowing his subjects to continue to live and practice their religion and traditions in peace. One of Cyrus's most merciful acts was to free the Jews from exile and captivity in Babylon. Cyrus enabled them to return to their promised land, restored them to Jerusalem and gave them the right to rebuild the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. This is why I was saying in my previous video, you guys, does this mean because they um, consider President Trump to be a type of Cyrus, that he will, if he's elected, if he's elected this year, will he make way for them to, you know, basically giving them the go-ahead to say, you know, if you want to rebuild it, I'll back you up, I'll support you, and I'll call upon the nations and the surrounding nations to, you know, give you a chance at building your own holy temple. Who knows? But this is what they envision. Because if they're making the connection between Trump and Cyrus, Cyrus enabled them, the Jews, to return to their promised land, restored them to Jerusalem, and gave them the right to rebuild the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. 
It's not about Trump building a shrine for himself because he's the Antichrist. Do the people not read the word of God anymore? This coin was produced as an expression of immense joy and gratitude to President Trump following the announcement that the American Embassy will be transferred to Jerusalem in honor of Israel's 70th Independence Day. Purchase one of these unique coins, blah, blah, blah. Let's read, actually. Purchase one of these unique coins and be a part of this historical and divine process process towards the rebuilding of the Third Temple in Jerusalem. You see why they're so excited about it? That's what's at the heart of it, you guys. There's no big mystery. They're blatantly telling us why they did it. There's no conspiracy. There's no mystery. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Donate 50 cents and get a the Trump temple coin. Or is that $50? This special coin was produced to praise the Jerusalem Declaration of President Donald Trump as a continuation of King Cyrus's declaration as part of an historical divine process towards the rebuilding of the temple. I told you. That's why I get that understanding because there's... That's what they're saying. That's what they're telling us. They're looking to him to help them out. That's all it comes down to, you guys. <clears throat> weeks and weeks and weeks ago, this person's video already declared Trump to be the Antichrist several times. Talks about the Noahide laws, how the world is going to be welcoming the Jewish Antichrist. Oh, my goodness gracious. Think about um, this. Where's it gone? Where did I put it? So apparently these nations, oh, it's even bigger than that in this person's video. It includes Libya, includes Turkey, goes all the way to India. This doesn't even cover half of the region that this other person was proposing in his video. Literally, he had seven nations carved out saying this is what Israel is wanting to do with the aid of um, President Donald Trump. And then he just mentions fleetingly Daniel chapter 9, just fleetingly, just drop it in there. So we're going to have all these Muslim nations are going to bow down to the Jewish Antichrist here. <laughs> oh, just, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> That's probably better to cry, isn't it? Because this is how serious this is, you guys. <laughs> don't be surprised to find Muslims commenting under people's videos who have that view saying, yeah, we agree too. You're on the right path, yeah. <sighs> the Jal is coming. The Mahdi and Isa Islam will make war against him. Yeah, you're on the right path, you guys. What does the Word of God say? I think we need to go to the Word of God right now. Is there anything more? Because I could go on and on and on. But I wanted to show you the coin, what it actually is to represent old Jaffa city and not greater Israel project like he said it was what does the word of God say you guys about Israel what's going to happen to Israel in the last days let's go and find out Joel chapter 3 I like to read from my bible the actual bible in the book Joel chapter 3 let's read it God judges the nations. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. Now, what I want you to do, if, if possible, to really put yourself in the context of this is the end times, what is the Lord going to do when he returns? Think about that. Bear that in mind. And how the Father's heart is not for annihilation of his people. Remember, friends, there's a remnant. Many of them are going to go through the fire of tribulation. Many. This is very sobering. This is very. This is dead serious. I don't take this lightly at all. This is why I'm upset. I'm righteously indignant. I guarantee you, I'll have people leaving comments on there, demeaning me, discrediting me, saying I'm a, a hospital. What did they call me the other time? Um, but just bad language, basically, saying I'm a Zionist agent. Oh right, really. How's that? How's that? An ex-Muslim from Pakistan, brought up in Britain, now I'm a Zionist agent, really. The word of God is true, let every man be a liar. You know, thank God for the fact that 
he allowed us Gentiles to come in and be grafted in. If it wasn't for the Lord causing the blindness on Israel, there's no way you and I would be in this covenant, you guys. Don't forget where you came from. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Yeah, I can get emotional, friends. I can cry. I'm human. Have you read the, um, the Psalms lately? And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Notice where God puts the blame when it comes down to judgment. Now chastisement, rebuke, correction is severe when he deals with his people. Absolutely guaranteed. You'll notice that theme is consistent throughout the word of God. And it was because they betrayed him. They broke his covenant. They were unfaithful to the Lord God the Holy One of Israel, they went running after Baals, Ashtoreth, under every green tree. Don't you think the Lord God knows this? He knows, he absolutely does. And they paid the price for that rebellion, you guys. They paid the price for it. And you know what? They're going to pay for it again. The Great Tribulation is, is coming, you guys. Why do you think it's coming? So they will be desperate. And out of their desperation, they will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when the blindness will be removed and they will recognize who he is. But God is going to ask you, what was your attitude toward my people, my heritage, my land? I'd be very careful if I was you. I'd be very, very careful. Oh, no, but it's the Noahide laws, don't you know? It's the beheadings that they, they're really conspiring. There's all these guillotines in America. Forget the fact that beheading is actually happening today. Forget the fact that you've got this one world dominionist, supremacist, the real replacement theology out there called Islam today, let alone that they've made it very clear, very openly, very br brazenly declared that they want to have the world submit under Islam. Oh no, we're just going to ignore that. We're just going to... They don't really mean that. They're just disenfranchised. It's poverty. It's uneducated. It's, they're just not educated, right? Right. And bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my people, my heritage Israel. Oh, now I'm going to have people say, what people are you talking about? They're not the real Jews. They're not really Israel. Do you know Israel was, oh, uh, you know what? God help you, you guys. God help you. The Lord have mercy. The Lord open your eyes, open your ears, give you a heart to receive the word of truth which is this good book here. Whom they have scattered among the nations, they have also divided up my land. My people, my heritage, my land. <clears throat> they have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot, sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon and all the coasts of Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? He's talking to the Islamic nations. But I would pose that question to all of those who are also trying to retaliate against the purposes of God. Are you seriously considering yourself to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, holding the views that you do? What Bible are you reading? What God do you really serve? What's your agenda? Swiftly and speedily I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver, my gold, my silver, my gold, and have carried into your temples my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem you have sold to the Greeks, that you may remove them far from their borders. The Lord God takes it very um, personally. You know that, you guys? But he also allows his enemies, he has enemies, you know, those who hate God, those who hate his land, his heritage, his people, they're his enemies. But he uses the enemies of Israel to chastise them. I say this so often on my videos, you guys. 
I repeat myself over and over and over again because I know I have new listeners, new you know, new people that come across my channel. They don't know about the stuff I've said in the past. This is why I repeat it. Behold, I will raise them out of the place to which you have sold them. I will return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a far-off people the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Prepare the mighty men. Let them let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest, harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. What side are you on? What side are you on, you guys? <clears throat> you know where the safe place to be is? With the God of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, the real, true Jewish Messiah. is safe to be with him completely with him not 50 50 not saying you're a believer in jesus yet you're bashing his people mocking the land of israel making fun of his heritage no you're either with him or you're against him that's it it's a done deal in the word of god it is it's pretty much black and white you guys the wicked or the righteous the wheat and the tares the sheep and the goats multitude multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision the sun and moon will grow dark and the stars will diminish their brightness the lord will also roar from zion from zion yeah the lord god is a zionist but now the word zion has become very dirty isn't it it's been dragged through the mud People need to remind themselves what the Word of God says. I'm, always, I'm pointing you, friends, back to the Word of God. I'm literally, I'm pointing. Let the Word of God be our anchor, our firm foundation, our guide, our, our map, our GPS. Because a lot of people, a lot of the sheep of God are going astray. Again being misled and utter his voice from Jerusalem the heavens and the earth will shake but the Lord but the Lord will be a shelter for his people so it doesn't matter how much these anti-Jewish folk out there who don't consider that my people the my heritage the my land they don't consider those verses no why not makes them uncomfortable doesn't it or the one I say, no, that that just means the church, not not Israel today. You can't possibly think Israel today is anything special in God's eyes. You know what? I'm not going to even go there. I'm not even dare to mess around with the word of God like that. Can't we just do good old fashioned love and pray for those who are lost? You know, like Jesus taught us that their blindness may be removed, that their hardened hearts may become soft, that the Lord will give them spiritual eyes to see, you know, intercession, prayer, mourning, grieving, pleading with the Lord to have mercy. Oh no, we want to say no, they're going to introduce the Antichrist to the world and have the Antichrist worshipped in Jerusalem make the world all the world come against jerusalem well that's exactly what's going to happen isn't it why do you think god comes in so much wrath but the lord will be shelter for his people and the strength of the children of israel so you shall know that i am the lord your god dwelling in zion my holy mountain then jerusalem shall be holy and no alien shall ever pass through her again Let's just pray that we, we get given the pass to pass through and that the Lord doesn't cross our name off the list. 
God blesses his people. And it will come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drip with new wine. I have even gone to all these other scriptures here. Please read the remainder of this scripture. I'm going to go to Obadiah. Good old book of Obadiah. A very small book. In fact, it's so small. It's one chapter. That's one chapter. But you know what it's all about, friends? It's about this ancient enmity between Jacob and Esau that's going to play out in the end times. <clears throat> I've done videos in the past regarding this and um, I made the connection between Arabia, Edom and the Islamic world. <sighs> the coming judgment on Edom, the vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, let us rise up against her for battle. Against two, Jerusalem, right? Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock. And I believe this could be um, a reference to the region by Petra, whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest amongst the stars. Have you looked at the geography, the architecture in Saudi Arabia lately? I've done a video about that. Please, again, refer back to my playlist section. These are recent messages that I've done, you guys. I show you on screen videos. Uh, maps, graphs, I go through history to show you the connection between the crescent moon god and Baal. The crescent moon worship today, Islam, is Baal worship, revamped. It's blatant, it's right there staring us in the face. If these had come to you, if robbers by night, oh, how you would be cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If grape gatherers had come to you, would they not have less some gleanings? Oh, how Esau shall be searched out. How his hidden treasures shall be sought after. All the men in your confederacy, think of the ten confederation beast kingdom, antichrist beast kingdom, shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it, but the Lord knows. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountains of Esau? Then your mighty men of Timan in Arabia shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Mount Seir is all a part of this region, the mountains of Esau. Edom mistreated his brother. Do you think the Lord forgets these things, you guys? So how much more are we going to be held accountable to how we treat Jacob today? Something to think about, isn't it? For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive... His forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you was one of them. Are you going to be one of them? Those of you, I'm speaking to those who are very much about Israel is working towards the greater Israel project. Yes, the wicked Jews control all the world. They've got all presidents in their pocket. It's all the one world religion, the Zionist agenda, you guys. Israel is not holy today god's gonna actually destroy her yeah it's all about us the gentiles yeah the church <clears throat> and there's a lot more about that where that come from are you gonna be as one of them are you gonna stand on the other side and just watch their annihilation oh, are you gonna be like corrie ten boom you remember corrie ten boom I want to be a Corrie Ten Boom. In many ways, I would love to be her. What, what, an, what an example of selflessness. Sacrificial love she displayed. Patience, perseverance, the love of God. Oh, may she rest in peace. 
But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity. That's coming again. Jacob's trouble. I can just see it now. I can see all these guys who hold this view. Israeli News Live, all these other channels that are out there. No more news. True news. Leland Jones. I just gave the name away. I can see them all on the other side saying, ha, huh, Israel deserved it. They deserved it because God has done away with them. They rejected. I can see that happening. You know why? Because they say that today. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother and the day of his captivity, nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. I'm going to remind you, as the word of God is reminding us, my people, my people, my people, in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity. How many times has that word been repeated? The day of his captivity, in the day of distress, in the day of their destruction, in the day of their calamity. This is about Jacob's trouble, you guys. And you better be careful where you stand when that day comes. Because God is going to make sure. He, he's basically... I don't think I need to spell it out. He's righteous. He's faithful. He's just. He's true. He's merciful also. But there comes a point when that season of grace has been so taken for advantage, so misused and abused, there's going to come a point when he's going to say, right, enough, done. In the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You, shall, you should have not stood at the crossroads to cut off those among them who escaped, nor should you have delivered up those among them who remained in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is upon upon all the nations is near as you have done it shall be done to you your reprisal shall return upon your own head for as you drank on my holy mountain so shall all the nations drink continually yes they shall drink and swallow and they shall be as though they had never been wow but on mount zion there shall be deliverance zion the zionist nation of israel yeah and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Really? Wow. So that means the Lord God is going to keep his covenant. He's going to keep his word. He's going to be faithful. Because he is faithful. Really? What a surprise. The house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau shall be a stubble. They shall kindle them and devour them. And no survivor shall remain of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken. Lord God have mercy. The south shall possess the mountains of Esau. Here's your, here's your greater Israel project right here. You want to talk to me about greater Israel project? Well, it's going to come to pass one day when the king of kings is here. Get used to it. The south shall possess the mountains of Esau and the lowland shall possess Philistia. They shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria. Benjamin shall possess Gilead. My next message, I'm going to finish eventually with the Abraham Accord and... I have some strong words according to the word of God, some very strong rebukes against Israel about what they're doing right now. Just to let you know, before you think I'm a Zionist Christian, I've got plenty of rebukes of the nation of Israel, you guys, according to the word of God, according to this, this accord that they've entered into, calling it Abraham Accord. It's not from the Lord. It's got nothing to do with Abraham. He, does, he despises this accord. And it's going to be to Israel's detriment because they don't learn their lesson. But again, this doesn't take the Lord by surprise. And I'll show you why when I um, refer you to another scripture. 
But this is the Greater Israel Project right here. And the captives of this host of the children of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. The captives of Jerusalem who are in Sarah, Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. Then saviors shall come to Mount Zion to judge, to judge, to judge the mountains of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Amen. Wow. God is going to turn things around. And those people who are on the wrong side of history, like many Christians were in the past, are going to, um, I wanted to get the whole verse here. Exodus, Ezekiel rather. weird that it does that why won't it just give it to me the way I asked for it let's try that okay there you go sometimes Bible Hub messes around Ezekiel 35 I'm putting things into context here in regards to what the other guy has been preaching on his channel regarding the Jewish Antichrist, regarding the Greater Israel Project, demonizing the Jewish people again, because apparently they've got this coin minted, and in there is a hidden secret Greater Israel Project, which is a load of nonsense. Judgment on Mount Seir. You see, this is all relation to the end times, and where the Lord directs his wrath. You need to pay attention to that, friends. Where when the Lord God returns, think about it this way. When he returns, why is he angry? And with whom is he angry? Isn't that a very important question? I want, I want to know. I want to know why is he angry? With whom is he angry? And that would tell us a lot. And then we'll understand why the Bible is so repetitive. Why it has these consistent themes throughout. From the book of Genesis all throughout to the end of the book. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. That region is all entirely Islamic today. Where is Islam in the Bible? You're making things up. It's because you're an ex-Muslim. You're reading Islam into the text. Really? Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it and say to it, Thus says the Lord God, Behold... Does it say on Mount Zion I am against you? Does it? Does it say that? Have they got the this word wrong? Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against you. I will stretch out my hand against you and make you most desolate. I shall lay your cities waste and you shall be desolate. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Why? Why does he do that? Because... And he will tell us why. Because you have had an ancient hatred and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the power of the sword at the time of their calamity. There comes that word again. And I believe in my understanding of the word of God, the prophetic books, this, this is relation to the time of the end, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. When their iniquity came to an end, when is that going to come to an end? Is their iniquity come to an end yet, you guys? No, their iniquity has not come to an end yet. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will prepare you for blood, and blood shall pursue you, since you have not hated blood, therefore blood shall pursue you. Thus I will make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it the one who leaves and the one who returns. That is absolute, utter desolation. And I will fill its mountains with the slain. Can you picture that for a moment? This is how serious this is, you guys. Dead bodies all over the place, all over the mountains in Seir, Edom. Who does that? The Lord. Yes, this is the Lord's wrath. He's angry at them for being angry at his people, for being envious, jealous, pointing the finger, mocking, laughing, thinking that they could steal God's land. Verse 
divide up his land, scatter his people, his sheep, his people. On your hills and in your valleys and in all your ravines, those who are slain by the sword shall fall. I will make you perpetually desolate and all your cities shall be uninhabited. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Let's go on. Because you have said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess them. West Bank, Jerusalem. Therefore, as I live, Israel, Judah. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will do according to your anger and according to the envy with which you showed in your hatred against them. I'll be very careful with you guys if you have any sort of anger, hatred. And I pick that up a lot from these people who hold that view. It's, it, you can just, you see it, you hear it in their language. You pick it up in their demeanor. You can discern the spirits, right? And I will make myself known among them when I judge you. The Lord is going to reveal himself to his people when he judges his thought. Then he shall know that I am the Lord. I have heard, I have heard all your blasphemies which you have spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are desolate, they are given to us to consume. Thus with your mouth you have boasted against me and multiplied your words against me. This just is like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for, from years and years and years ago now. Did God say that they can have it? No, he didn't. Thus says the Lord God, the whole earth will rejoice when I make you desolate. Why would the world rejoice when this region is made desolate? I know mystery Babylon's destruction, even heaven will rejoice at that. The whole earth will rejoice when I make you desolate as you rejoice because the inheritance of the house of Israel was desolate. So I will do to you, you shall be desolate on Mount Seir as well as all of Edom, all of it. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Another scripture, not finished. Zephaniah, a very short book yet again. There's two or three chapters in this book. I'm going to go through the scriptures with you guys. I'm sorry because there's not many people are giving the word of God and I'm going to give you the word of God. Zephaniah chapter 1. The great day of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Zephaniah. Let's go on. The great day of the Lord. I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal. Do you think God is happy with this Islam being worshipped in his land? Whose land is it, you guys? Whose land is the land of Israel? It's always been his. He gave it to his people for an inheritance. The 12 tribes. It's his land. Baal is worshipped here. Look at the rooftops today in Israel. You know, the entity that is over the Temple Mount right now, who people are still disputing whether or not it's the relocation or it's not the relocation. I don't know. I don't want to go into that argument. But it's pretty plain, it's very obvious what religion is having dominion there. And it's the same demon gods from of old. The names of the idolatrous priest of the pagan priest, those who worship the host of heaven, host, crescent moon and star on the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but also who swear by Milcom, is that dangerous for Israel to enter into this alliance with the UAE, Bahrain, Islamic nations? very dangerous those who have turned back from following the lord and have not sought the lord nor inquired of him the apostates be silent in the presence of the lord god for the day of the lord is at hand even if they think that they can enter into no let's just all get along you know the abrahamic house god is going to be very angry with that be silent in the presence of the lord for the day of the lord is at hand for the lord has prepared a sacrifice he has invited his guests this is so similar. I spoke to you, friends, at length in another video regarding Ezekiel, 
chapter 38, chapter 39, and Revelation chapter 19, going into Revelation chapter 20. It's the same language. The Lord prepares a sacrifice. He invites his guests. And this is going to be very gruesome. This is the Lord slaughtering his enemies. And it shall be in that day the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with foreign apparel. In the same day I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And there shall be on that day, says the Lord, the sound of a mournful cry from the fish gate, a wailing from the second quarter and a loud crashing from the hills. Wail, you inhabitants of Makdesh. For all the merchant people are cut down, all those who handle money are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency, who say in their heart, look at this, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Lukewarm. God is going to judge those people in Israel. Therefore, their goods shall become booty and their houses a desolation. They shall... Build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. What day are we talking about, you guys? The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like refuse. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. I want to go to the next chapter because it's not finished. <clears throat> I call to repentance, gather yourselves together, yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. He's saying, return to me, humble yourself, fast and seek me now before I return, because I'm going to come in judgment and great wrath. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice, Justice, seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Judgment on the nations. Here we go. For Gaza shall be forsaken, Ashkelon desolate. They shall drive at Ashdod that noonday, and Ekron shall be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines. I will destroy you, so there shall be no inhabitant. The sea coast shall be pastures with shelters for shepherds and flock, folds for flocks. The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Remember, because it's the remnant that survive it. The remnant. They shall feed their flocks there in the houses of Ashkelon. They shall lie down at evening for the Lord their God will intervene for them and return their captives. This is the beauty of the word of God. You can't just assume he's going to judge the entire land and be done with it. That's it. It's over. No. It's a cleansing. It's a chastisement, a cleansing, a rebuke, a judgment. All those judgments that God promised that he would pour out... On Israel, this is when it's going to come to pass. But he does not utterly do away with his people. Why is this so difficult for many people to understand? Please, I'm going to refer you now to the book of Romans after this. But there's so much to read. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the insults of the people of Ammon, the Muslims today, with which they have reproached my people. Is that true or not? I'll show you a video about that in a while. Oh. This is going to be a long video. Do you know how many hours this is going to take me to upload? 
Says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Surely Moab shall be like Sodom, and the people of Ammon like Gomorrah, overrun with weeds and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue, remnant, think remnant, the residue of my people shall plunder them, the people of Ammon, Moab, their, the places where they occupied, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. That's what God is going to do, you guys. It's going to cleanse the land, judge all the wicked. And isn't that the way? There's only a remnant that really truly understand him and his ways. But are just so clinging on to the Lord. Holding on to his garment, the Lord Jesus, our Messiah. Wide is the gate, right friends? But narrow is the way that leads to life. This they shall have for their pride, because they have reproached and made arrogant threats against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be awesome to them, for he will reduce to nothing all the gods of the earth. People shall worship him. Here's your Jewish Messiah. People shall worship him, each one from his place, indeed all the shores of the nations. You Ethiopians also, you shall be slain by my sword. Oh. Oh. And he will stretch out his hand against the north, destroy Assyria and make Nineveh desolation as dry as the wilderness. The herd shall lie down in her midst, every beast of the nation. It goes on. <clears throat> this is the rejoicing city that dwelt securely, that said in her heart, I am it and there is none beside me. How she has become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down. Everyone who passes by her shall hiss and shake his fist. We're going to read the entire book here. The final chapter, Zephaniah chapter 3. The wickedness of Jerusalem. This is what I'm saying about God correcting, chastising, judging his people. But there's a remnant. This is what the Great Tribulation is going to do, you guys. Do you think that the nation right now entering into alliances with the UAE, Bahrain, pleases the Lord? And I'm defending that? No, absolutely not. But we have to rightly discern the times we are living in. It doesn't give that, us a free pass to keep throwing condemnation on these people who he calls his people. It's up to him to judge his people, you guys. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted, to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails. But the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction, so that her dwelling would not be cut off, despite everything for which I punished her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. You see, do you see the severity of their harlotry towards the Lord God? This is why their judgment is going to be severe also, you guys. And we ought to be in fear and trembling, knowing that that is what's coming. Consider what was written in the book of Ezekiel. I just read that to you from chapter 4. How the Lord God says to Esau, to, Jacob, uh, to Jacob's arch enemy, Esau, why were you there on the other side looking, like gazing at their destruction, at the time of their distress, at the time of their calamity, enjoying it, being amused? God, just be careful, you guys. Be very careful. He understands our motives. He knows the deepest secrets in our hearts. He knows our thoughts are far off. He knows. He knows exactly what you think before you think it. Be careful, you guys. Wait. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I rise up for plunder. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, 
to pour on them my indignation or my fierce anger, all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then I will restore to the peoples a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord, to serve him with one accord from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. But he just judged Ethiopia. The Lord God is going to judge the entire earth. There's going to be remnants, you guys, from everywhere that are going to make it. My worshippers, there's so many faithful in uh, Ethiopia. The daughter of my dispersed ones shall bring my offering. In that day, you shall not be ashamed of any of your deeds in which you transgress against me. Why? For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. I will leave in your midst a meek and humble people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of, an, of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies. It's the remnant. Shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. Who would be making them afraid right now? Maybe the terrorist nation surrounding them? Who they think they can appease by entering into alliances with? No, 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 Israel. You don't do that. You rely on the Lord your God. In him only you must put your trust. Joy in God's faithfulness. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Now it's just all jubilance, celebration. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your judgments he has cast out your enemy the enemy that the lord your used to judge them but he also will judge them he will clean up shop properly the king of israel jesus christ the lord is in your midst you shall see disaster no more wow glorious oh my goodness wow in that day shall be said to jerusalem do not fear zion the Zionist nation in that day it shall be said that word is still going to be used you're not going to kill Zion you guys you can't be joking Zion is never going to be disappeared never the Lord will roar from the Mount Zion let not your hands be weak the Lord your God in your midst the Lord Jesus this is when he's going to be here the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to love his people. The ones that made it. The remnant. The elect. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly who are among you. To whom its reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame. <clears throat> I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who were driven out. <sighs> I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. Even in the Black Lives Matter riots, the Jews are being, um, what do you call it, protested against. <coughs> At that time I will bring you back, even at the time I gather you. For I will give you fame and praise. The Lord is going to give his people in Zion fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I return your captives before your eyes. That's when the Lord will be here. That's the difference. Oh my goodness, you guys. Zechariah 14. Chapter 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken. So that we can expect Jerusalem to be taken, you guys. The city shall be taken. The houses rifled, the women ravished. Who does that today? Islamic jihadists. That's what they do. What If you go and study how ISIS, what they did, what their tactics were, what they did when they entered these villages, these regions, what they did to the people, to the properties, to the monuments, to the streets, to the 
to the cities, the towns, the villages. The, the oh my goodness, the oh, the rape of the women. They're selling them for their body parts. Selling women like a meat market because they're captive slaves. The women ravished, half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. What is your attitude going to be on that day, you guys? Is it going to be Israel deserved it? This is just a, a plot in order to further and expand the Greater Israel Project borderlines? We know what's going to happen after that, right? Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall, fall, move, shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Ezel. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Glorious day. And it shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light, the lights will diminish, it shall be one day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen, that it will be light. And in that day it shall be that living waters shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, and half of them toward the western sea. In both summer and winter it shall occur, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. That is when our Jewish Messiah, the Jewish King, Lord Jesus Christ, will be ruling over all the earth in that day. It shall be, the Lord is one, and his name one. It goes back to the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. <laughs> Romans 11, I have to read this, you guys. Israel's rejection, not total. Romans 11. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against, against Israel, saying... He was, he was complaining, right? Elijah was complaining to the Lord. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars and rejected Jesus Christ. And I alone am left and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Allah. Check my video out regarding Baal and how it's being worshipped from Saudi Arabia and going out into the world. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. This is so important, this chapter. Oh my goodness, please go over it. Go over it, go over it, and wash your brain with the blood of Jesus. Those of you who are very anti-Jewish, anti-Zion, anti-Israel, anti-everything relation to Israel right now. <clears throat> Let the word of God give you the perspective that is uh, godly, full of the Holy Spirit wisdom and understanding. We have to be wise as serpents, you know. <laughs> What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The rest were blinded, just as it is written. God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, to this very day. Mind you, Paul was writing this back in the day. And David says, 
Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow down their backs always. Israel's reject not, rejection not final. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Fantastic scripture. It's very thought-provoking. Certainly not. But through their fall... To provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for us Gentiles... How much more their fullness, because their fullness is coming, you guys. Don't be jealous. Their fullness is coming. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world... Do you hear that? If they're being cast away is the reconciling of the world. If they were not going to be cast away, then the rest of the world would not have been reconciled to the Lord. Do you understand that? For if they're being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Life from the dead valley of dry bones i want you to read this for yourself ezekiel chapter 37 read that please <clears throat> that is the fulfillment of what paul is talking about here this is a prophetic scripture you guys they're going to come back from the dead spiritually remember friends everybody who is not born again outside of christ jesus are spiritually dead this is why Jesus said to one of the disciples who said, let me go and bury my father. And he said, let the dead bury their dead. <clears throat> Does that make sense? For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. <clears throat> and if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree, if we can grasp what is being said here, we'll understand the rest of this chapter. <clears throat> Do not boast against the branches. But if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said. Because of unbelief, they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God. On those who fell, severity, but toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise you also will be cut off. Remember the parable that the Lord Jesus gave to us? In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, he talks to us about the vine. Jesus is the vine. The Father is the vine dresser. And the Lord Jesus gives us a beautiful parable um, describing how if we abide in him, the branches abide in the vine, we can bear fruit. We can't do anything outside of him. But if we don't bear fruit, he will cut those branches and those branches go in the fire. But when those branches are bearing fruit, the Father prunes those branches that they might bear more fruit. But we have to be in the vine, in Jesus Christ. Similar language here. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in. If they do not continue in unbelief, 
will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. <laughs> for if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more with these, who are natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Don't boast, you guys. Don't get haughty. <clears throat> For I do, I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And when that happens, and so all Israel will be saved at it, as it is written. But all Israel, you guys, includes the remnant, okay? It is the remnant. The deliverer will come out of Zion. And he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You know, I hear often in these videos and these other channels who hate the Jews and they hate everything regarding Israel. They think it's all a Zionist agenda. There's some New World Order plot with the Jews at the top. I often hear them say, oh, the wicked Talmudic Zionists, you know, they've got the Noahide laws. They're just going to usher in the Antichrist who they believe is going to be their Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. Well, you know what? They're seeking the Messiah for a reason. The Lord has given it to them to seek for him. Have you ever thought about that? When he comes, he's going to turn away the ungodliness from Jacob. Their deliverer, he's coming. Surely he is coming. Our Lord Jesus is coming for his people, you guys. You know... Think about the parable, <clears throat> the parable of the prodigal son. Sometimes it feels like the son that was at home, the good one, the obedient one, feels like how many Christians behave today when the father is always looking on the lookout for his other son. And when he's coming home, the father's already there welcoming him with open arms. And yet the son at home doesn't like you. He was like, well, 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 yeah, but he did all this. He, yeah, but he was so wicked. And, you know, he took all your money and he did all that. And the father just said, you know what? Everything I have is yours. But do you understand? This is my son who was dead. He's come back. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> the deliverer will come out of Zion. Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins I remind you we're still in the book of Romans this isn't the Old Testament concerning the gospel they are enemies yeah they are enemies for your sake but concerning the election they are the beloved for the sake of the fathers it's a catch 22 this is called the wisdom of God. It's a mystery. <laughs> For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, don't forget where you came from, yet now have obtained mercy through their disobedience. Think about that. Just let that sink in for a moment. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet now have obtained mercy through their disobedience. Pray for them, you guys. Pray for the people of Israel. Pray for the Lord's heritage. Pray, pray for the Lord's land. Think of the Lord Jesus and pray for them if he makes it easier for you. If you despise them that much. Look upon the Lord Jesus. Even so, these also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you they also may obtain mercy for God has committed them all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all this is why you've got to read this chapter over and over let it sink in oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counsellor? 
uh, who has first given to him, and he and it shall be repaid to him. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. Now, let me show you what the surrounding nations think about Israel and how people who put this news out there regarding the Greater Israel Project, the Zionists, Trump is the Antichrist, the USA and Israel are wicked, they are the mystery Babylon. <clears throat> you might as well join this guy, the leader of Hizbut Tahrir, who's in Australia. Because you sound a lot like him. <laughs> I wonder, do these people really want to see this thing come to pass? The it's Jewish entity is a cancer. And cancer, you will have to get rid of it. As long as the cancer in the body, there's a big problem. And Ummah al-Islam will never accept this cancer. If all Arab rulers, Muslim rulers, they tomorrow come together and they put their signature, we accept this evil state of Israel, this Jewish entity. Wallahi, that will not change in the mind of the Ummah. <laughs> we are sure this Jewish entity have no chance, no future. It's a small island in, in the ocean of Ummah al-Islam. <laughs> and no island was able to take over the, 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 the ocean. <laughs> Never happen. The ocean will take over this island. Did you hear that? But yet, these people are telling me that Israel and the USA are collaborating, really, for the Greater Israel Project. Well, what are you going to do about people like that? Is he going to just disappear? Just like, you know, I don't know, vanish into thin air? Nothing, nothing that these people who call themselves Christians teach Bible prophecy, none, none of it lines up with the Word of God, none of it lines up, lines up with reality, none of it. It's a matter of time. And this state, they call it state, Wallahi, it is so weak that everyone of them has his second passport, original passport, and they are waiting that the Ummah will stand up and carry the war, carry the jihad against them, they will all run away, go back from where they are coming, from Paris, London, Berlin, Warsaw, Moscow, everywhere. The Ummah will never surrender Palestine to the Jew. That so they're never going to surrender Palestine to the Jews. You need to pay attention to people like this. They might sound like they're madmen and they're just zealots, you know, radicals. No, he's getting his understanding from their own religious authorities, you guys. <laughs> Oh, I feel like hitting my head in a brick wall. Can you see this, you guys? Oh, look, there's a brick wall right there. Maybe the Lord will smack his head in that brick wall spiritually, and he might be able to see the foolishness of what he's saying. He's setting himself up directly against the Lord of hosts, you guys. Do you understand? And this is how the Antichrist beast kingdom is going to be an entity full of blasphemies against my people, against my land, against my heritage. That's why God is going to judge these nations who speak like this. <laughs> Be warned. That will never happen. If the rulers are thinking how to make peace with this uh, entity, how to sit down together, the Ummah is thinking how can we bring Salah al-Din back? Mm -hmm. How can we free the land? How can we carry the jihad? Salah din the Ottoman Caliph. So he is speaking for, well, there you go. The head is right there. The UAE-Israel deal. What do you think about it, Abu Anas? He's saying, let them make their alliances. We don't recognize a Jewish entity. No way. The UAE, the Arabs, they sold out. They sold the Palestinians out. We're not going to compromise. No, we're going to come. And we're thinking of how to come against them. He just said that. We're thinking how to make war against these people. This is how serious it is, you guys, not a joke. And you've got people like Leland Jones making videos, being in Israel. What a traitor. Seriously, what a traitor. What a backstabber, unfaithful deserter of the my people, my heritage, my land. How about pray? You're in the land. Pray for the people. Pray for the Messiah to return, the real Messiah, Jesus Christ. Go into fasting. Put a message on your channel saying, let's go into a season of fasting. 
It was just announced last weekend, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur is coming up. Let's go into deep repentance, the church included, for all their anti-Jewish rhetoric. They need to remind themselves of what's written in the Word of God, going back to Romans 11 and going back to the scriptures, for example, like the ones I showed you. Let's finish what, he's, what he has to say. That's where the Umba thinking. Maybe they cannot today, but as long you know, and you have the will, and you plan, tomorrow is for you. Tomorrow you will win. You will be able to do something. And this Ummah tomorrow will do something. Wallahi, it will not take us one week, two weeks. If a sincere people coming out from Egypt, from Syria, from Jordan, from Turkey, from Iraq, Wallahi, it will not take us two weeks to free the land of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So easy. This evil is not a true state. They are from the bread until the airplane, the rockets, they, they, they take it from, from the west. Mm -hmm. They are not a true land, not a true state. They try just to trick us, we are strong. What can you do with your weapon if millions of the Ummah move toward Palestine? Mm -hmm. What can you do with your weapon? Yes, How can that will help you? No. Zero. It will yeah, he said, what take you us, wallahi, maximum two weeks. <sighs> two weeks, maximum. And he said, what can you do, right? What can you do? When all the when the Muslim Ummah come together, this is the Gog Magog army I'm warning you about. This is what the Word of God is telling us and warning us about. It's these nations, you guys, that are planning on the annihilation of the Jewish people. It's not blinking South Korea, North Korea, China. Now, I'm not saying that they won't come into alliance in agreement with Turkey, with Iran. It's very likely that they would do that. If it comes down to the crunch of things, they may do that. But it's the surrounding nations that have the primary resistance, hostility, opposition to the Jewish people in the Jewish land. Because Islam is here to dominate, subjugate and abrogate. <clears throat> and you will be you are able to free the whole Philistine from A to Z. It says five minutes, but it was only... Okay, good. Right. <clears throat> That's the mindset that we're dealing with here. Ezekiel 37. I'm going to refer you back to this playlist that I did, you guys. <clears throat> There's also... I've got other playlists. <clears throat> There's a playlist here that I've done regarding to Israel, the Jews, Jerusalem... Israel Bible prophecy, please listen to that one, you guys, if you can. Um, <clears throat> I've also got a playlist with <sighs> this is going to be a long video where I addressed <sighs> the Lord gave me courage and boldness, you guys, to speak out against Israeli News Live. Um, no more news and true news. And I called them what they are, anti-Jewish propaganda TV. Notice in their words, in their titles, they call themselves news channels. Propaganda news channels. No more news. Israeli news, live, true news. All of it is propaganda, anti-Jewish rhetoric. And they're lining themselves up to come against the Holy One of Israel. There you go. That's what I think. And um, anyway... I was going to read this article, but time's run out, and I will continue with this Abraham Accord message, you guys. I've prepared a lot of material for that, and um, this just was something that came my way this morning, and I had to address it, okay? You're welcome to leave your feedback, nice feedback, not so nice feedback. I don't mind. Just show everyone what you really think about this. I love you. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you.